Hi guys. We're gonna go over spec sheets part two today. <clears throat> We're gonna focus on pants. So I have amended the spec sheet um, like this and it is now um, got the measurements for pants. Um, so the assignment is gonna be to spec a pair of your pants. You um, can keep it as simple as you like. Um, so sweatpants are fine. If you want to go a little bit more complicated, you can. Um, I'm just going to go over the basic measurements um, for the pants today, what they are, what they look like. So this will be uploaded. You can find this. Um, you can also find this as well, which is the descriptions for all the measurements. And in addition to this lesson, I'm going to do a slight part two to this. Um, where I spec an actual pair of pants, um, just like I spec the shirt, so you can uh, watch this for your measurements on how to do it. Um, and you can also watch the live version as well. Um, so let's get started. So I got a pair of pants here, and a little bit more complicated through a pair of jeans. Um, and really just because I have some measurements here for more complicated pants, um, now if your pants don't have some of these elements, you'll just not leave them in. Uh, but first, let's start off with uh, our top and work our way down. So we're going to start here with our cross waist. So our cross waist, let's get my little guy here. And um, it's really just from edge to edge. It starts at our waist seam, actually. Uh, and there shouldn't be much difference for most pants um, from the top into the waist seam. But what we want to do is we want to go from side seam to side seam along waist. So we'll measure from here. Oh, no, I don't want a square. Um, <clears throat> sorry about that. Like this. I'm gonna go right like that. And that is our cross waist. So from side to seam to side seam, straight across uh, along that waist seam. Now next is our waistband width, and that is straight from the waist seam up to the top of the waistband. So basically just how tall or how, how wide your uh, waistband is. The next is our high hip. So what we do is we measure down the center front three inches. So we'll measure down like that. And from that point, we're going to measure from side seam to side seam making sure that we hit through that point. So it's this measurement that is three inches down from our uh, waist seam along the center front and then side seam to side seam. That is our high hip. Now next we're going to do our across hip and we're going to measure down again. We're going to measure seven inches. So we'll measure seven inches down and then again from side seam to side seam, hitting through that point. Okay, so that's our hip, across hip. Next we have our front rise. Our front rise is from the crotch seam up to the waist seam. So this full center front length of our pants. Now our back rise is the same thing, we just do it on the back and we try to flatten it out. We can see these guys are a little bit sort of pushed up here, but of course you want to make your garments as flat as you can, you want to lay them down. You want to get that full rise, um, so any sort of bubbles or curves, make sure you're getting that full length of that seam. So waist seam to crotch seam on the back um, is called our back rise. Next we have our across thigh. And what we're going to do is from that crotch seam, we're going to measure down one inch, just like that. And then once we get to that one inch point, we're going to go ahead and measure from inseam to side seam across our thigh, just like that. And that's our across thigh measurement. Next, we have our uh, across knee, and it's quite similar. We're going to start from the crotch and measure down 13 inches about truck right there. Uh, measure down our 13 inches, uh, down our inseam, just like that. Um, and now we're going to measure from side seam to inseam, across like so. 
and that is our across knee right there. Uh, next, what we're going to do is we're going to do our leg opening, and that's pretty simple. We go ahead and we just go down to the very cuff of the pants, and we measure from side seam to inseam, uh, right here at the opening, right here. Now our next measurement is our cuff width. Now uh, these pants don't have cuffs, um, but if they did, let's sort of put in an imaginary cuff. So if these guys had some sort of cuff like this, let's say, let's fill it in, make it a little blue color. So if our pants had some sort of cuff like this, that's where the cuff width would come in. We'd measure from the cuff seam up here down to the edge of the cuff, like so, and that is our cuff width. Some pants have them, some pants don't. If you're doing a sweat pant, it would be that one by one rib trim at the end of your pants. Any other cuff, of course, will also fall into that category. Our inseam, our inseam is the inside seam here. It measures from the crotch up here straight down to your cuff opening. So you'd measure this length right here from crotch to uh, either the edge of the pants or the cuff seam, depending on what your pants have and what they don't have. So our inseam right there, and of course that little seam on the inside here, that's called our inseam. Pretty easy to remember, the inside seam is the inseam. Uh, next we have our fly length, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit for this. Um, actually, I'm gonna zoom in for a lot of these guys uh, since that will be necessary, so let me zoom in a little bit. Position this. And our fly seam measurement is measured from the waist seam up here down to the bottom of the top stitching, straight down, just like that, okay? So not to a little patch or not to the end of the zipper, but to where the top stitching intersects with your center front seam right there, okay? So that's our fly length. Next we have a variety of measurements for pockets. Now if your pants don't have pockets, if you're doing something simple like uh, sweatpants, they might not have pockets. And depending on your pockets, you might need a few more measurements. So if you need a couple more measurements, you can always add them in at the bottom. But we have some very basic ones right here. The first one would be pocket opening. So we have side seam to pocket. So just like that would be from side seam to where the pocket intersects with the waist seam right here. We have pocket depth. That's from waist seam down to the pocket right here along the side seam. Now you see with this little curve here, we probably have some other measurements and uh, probably have a sort of uh, inset where we uh, went in and really looked at a few of the more pocket measurements. And depending on the complexity of your pocket, you're gonna need either a few more measurements, um, but we're gonna try to keep it simple, we're gonna try to keep it basic. Um, so these two measurements are okay for right now. But you can imagine we might want something a little bit better kind of governing this curve here. We probably put in the pocket like this, the pocket sort of length um, uh, uh, like so. Maybe add another measurement in here. But we're going to keep it simple. Um, and in that vein too, you can see that there's a small change pocket here. I don't have any measurements for the change pocket if you want to put them in. Um, you would follow the same uh, measurements as on your back pocket. So these pockets are a little bit differently con constructed than our patch pockets. Um, but our next measurements will be governing our patch pockets. So let's take a look at them. Just gonna scroll down. So again, if you wanted to add in measurements for your patch pocket, uh, I'm sorry, your um, uh, coin pocket or watch pocket or um, anything, however you call it, there's a number of little little variety of names for it. But let's take a look at these guys and what we do. So um, these per particularly jean pockets. So the first one um, have to do with their placement. 
So back pocket from side seam. So what we're going to do is at the top, we're going to measure how far um, the pocket is from our side seam here. Now, if there's two distances, like see how it, it comes in a little bit here, you might need two measurements. This depends on the shape of your pocket and how it's placed. Um, if they're the same, you can keep them the same, but they might be different. Um, so you would add sort of uh, back pocket from side seam top, back pocket from side seam bottom, um, if needed. Again, this is if you have pockets, and depending on the shape of them, and depending on their placement as well. You can imagine if you start to get fairly more complicated with pockets, again, they would be their own sort of separate insert. They would have their own sort of um, blown up, uh, magnified uh, illustration, uh, really going through all of the different measurements that are needed. All right, next we have the pocket uh, from the waist. So we just measure down, and these are typically, you only need one measurement from this, but again, it really depends on the style of the pocket. So if it was angled or whatever else, you might need more than one measurement. But here, it's just the waist seam down to the top of the pocket here. Now the next measurements go with the actual shape of the pocket. So um, the shape of the pocket, of course, since it's a patch pocket, is completely independent to the pants. They're sort of made separately and then sort of patched on uh, wherever you want. So the first we have the pocket width. So we have pocket width down here or up here. The full width of the pocket. So at the widest part, we get our full width. We also have our pocket length. And this would be our full length of the pocket. So right like that from top to bottom at the fullest part. Now we also have pocket length two, and that would be this measurement here, so we would know when to sort of corner it off, so from here to here. Um, and again, depending on the shape of your patch pockets or anything else, um, it might be a little bit different. Um, you might need more measurements, you might need fewer measurements, if it's just a, a square, a rectangle. Um, so whatever you need to describe the shape of the pocket, um, put in those measurements. And again, if you don't have any pockets, then you don't worry about it. The next we have is a uh, belt loop length. And so most of these should all be the same, but that's basically from the top down to the very bottom of your belt loop. So in uh, instances like this, they are longer than the waistband. Sometimes they are connected in the waistband and sort of come up here, but they are still longer uh, because they're made to sort of kind of poof out a little bit. So if they're like kind of bubbled out a little bit, kind of coming around here like this, make sure you get that full length because even if it starts here and ends up here, starts at the waist seam and ends up here at the top, if they're looped out, they still are a little bit longer and they are gonna be a little bit longer um, just to accommodate different size belts. Next we have our belt loop width, which is fairly small, but also easy. So again, that's just from side to side of our belt loop, just like that. And um, then we have also our belt loop placement, and that's our um, uh, last one. So what we're going to do is, um, on the back, since we're already here, I'm going to measure from the side seam out to this. Now it looks very small here, but usually they're placed a little bit more on the inside, maybe a little bit here. Um, so you measure just from the side seam. So let's actually just for example sake, let's create a belt loop at a little bit more of a standard place. It usually would be about right here. Usually they're not all the way here on the side seam. Um, but if they are, it doesn't matter. You, you just measure from the side seam in to where that is. Um, and I would just measure again from side seam or the edge there um, into where my belt loop placement is. And that's on the back. Now we also have one here, but that's placed on the center back and it typically always is, so we don't really need to specify that because we know that it's going right on the center back. Now on the front, our belt loops will typically line up with uh, this right here. They might be a little bit offset or um, they might not have a pocket that they line up with. But in any case, to put the placement, we do the same thing. We just measure from the side seam into the belt loop just like this. So side seam into edge of the belt loop is our belt loop placement um, on the back. So there we are. We have our simple measurements um, for pant specs. Again, 
Uh, try to keep it simple. Um, and if there is some elements, just try to use the uh, empty spaces to put in. So we have a couple empty spaces at the bottom here where if you have a you know random patch pocket or other little element um, in your pants that you can add it in there. But you know, again, try to keep it simple um, is always best. Um, and we can do any kind of pant that you want from sweatpants to jeans or whatever else. So whatever you got in your closet, whatever you want to do, if you're up for the challenge, you can do a little bit more complicated one. Um, if you just want to do something very simple, I'm sure you guys got some sweatpants um, that you can do um, that are very easy here. So those are all of our measurements for our pants. And just like before, you're going to put in um, whatever you want up here um, if you don't quite know it. So if you don't quite know the yardage, just estimate it. Um, if there's buttons, uh, try to measure it and see what size it is um, based on measurement charts uh, and button charts uh, you can find online. Garment description is self-explanatory. Uh, date, season, style number, you can just make up a season or style number to whatever you think would be appropriate. Fiber content you should find. Uh, fabric type, um, you should probably know what it is. Uh, whether again if it's denim or if it's um, just sort of a knit sweatpant or something like that. If there are any trims just let, let us know about it. If there aren't any buttons so trim this would also go if you have drawstrings or something like that on your sweatpants that would be a trim um, or other you can put it there too. And just go with whatever size is appropriate if, if none of these are appropriate if it's a number or whatever just cross it out and put in the number and of course put in um, some images of your garment right here um, back in front so we have that as a reference all right guys so that's a pretty short video but um, I'll come back with part two uh, where we spec pair of pants um, in real life with measurement tape and I fill in uh, the chart accordingly um, and I'll see you then uh, hopefully you had an okay, at least an okay spring break, um, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.